HEOS project is searching space for signs of Dyson spheres. Funded by the Swedish government, the project not only believes that these extraterrestrial power plants are possible, but also assumes that we can detect them. Dyson spheres are power plants that hyper-civilizations build in space to harness incredible amounts of energy. Will HEOS soon enable us to make contact with an extraterrestrial species for the first time? Imagine that some photos of distant stars show strange structures. These structures clearly indicate Dyson spheres. These hypothetical power plants are therefore much more than theory. They are very likely an undeniable reality of our universe. These fantastic structures are built by civilizations that are so far superior to us that they do not draw their energy from nuclear power or fossil fuels. These superintelligences tap into entire stars and galaxies to meet their energy needs. The HEOS project is the first Swedish initiative to search for technosignatures. The project was named after the Greek god of blacksmithing, Hephaestus. The divine blacksmith is supposed to show us possible traces of extraterrestrial works on an astronomical level. The HEOS researchers focused, among other things, on the Dyson spheres. These gigantic megastructures are visible over long distances and can tell us more about the real work of aliens in space. The fact that this project has now been implemented shows not only that the Swedish government considers the existence of extraterrestrials to be probable, but also that we humans are increasingly intensifying our search for contact with these life forms. Dyson spheres can only be built by very advanced civilizations. On the Kardashev scale, they are species of the second and third category. We humans have not even reached level one yet. It's a fantastic idea that one day we could have contact with such life forms. Once we have found them, more highly developed civilizations could help us to solve our problems and also to ascend to a super culture. Heos, there must be thousands of species out there. According to the US researcher, Laura Mersini Houghton, there could be thousands of intelligent civilizations in space. We just don't have contact with them because we exist in a kind of desert region in the universe. It would be a bit like looking at a Bedouin village somewhere in the Sahara and drawing conclusions about the world's population. From a purely logistical point of view, there must be other life forms in space, and it's unlikely that we are truly the only living beings, given the richness and diversity that the universe produces. Statistical studies have shown that there must be at least 36 intelligent civilizations in the Milky Way. In the entire known universe, in which millions of galaxies exist, there must be thousands of highly developed species. The Swedish search for Dyson spheres should finally bring certainty, and the results so far are stunning. From a gigantic data set of over 5 million stars, the HEO scientists have isolated seven promising candidates. These stars are mainly red dwarf stars and all show a striking infrared emission that could match theoretical models of Dyson spheres. While organizations like SETI used to search mainly for radio waves, Modern approaches focus on infrared telescopes. A star emits light in different wavelengths, mainly in the visible spectrum. A Dyson sphere or a similar construct would partially block the visible light, but would re-emit the absorbed energy as thermal radiation. This excess heat can show up as strong infrared emission. The star appears dimmer than expected or shows noticeable light fluctuations. If natural causes such as dust clouds can be ruled out, a strong infrared source could indicate an advanced civilization. HEOS searched for such typical infrared signatures using the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, the Gaia Telescope, and TESS over a period of more than 10 years to find evidence of possible megastructures. Five Types of Dyson Spheres in the Universe it may sound almost unbelievable to us Earthlings, but Dyson spheres theoretically make it possible to capture all of a star's radiation and use it for technological purposes. Can you imagine what a civilization can do with that much energy? Don't just think of heaters, lighting, and the operation of supercomputers. Entire spaceships and hyper-settlements in space can be powered by the energy of a star. We will now introduce to you the five most important variants of these superpower plants. 1. 
The Dyson shell is the classic variant, a giant hollow sphere that completely encloses a star. This sphere is able to absorb all of the star's energy. Solar radiation hits the inside of the shell directly and is captured by solar cells that are kilometers long. The energy could be transmitted to settlements and factories on a distant alien world via a planet-spanning network or by wireless energy transmission. Simulations have shown that this type of shell is physically possible, but according to our current knowledge, they would be extremely unstable. Even the tiniest shift could throw a Dyson shell out of balance and cause it to crash onto the star. A shell would also be vulnerable to asteroids or other space objects approaching the sun. Although this sphere is one of the simplest ideas, a civilization would have to mine materials from across the solar system and assemble them in space to operate a power plant like this. It would probably have to process a large part of the planets in its system for building materials. This idea is crazy. Imagine that we had to transport matter from distant planets and moons like Pluto or Titan toward the Sun to install a power plant there. A Dyson sphere can be recognized by a star that emits no visible radiation, but which radiates an extremely large amount of infrared heat due to the captured energy that is released as waste heat. 2. The Dyson Swarm consists of a whole fleet of orbital solar cells. Instead of a solid shell, a huge swarm of millions or billions of solar satellites orbits the star. Like an army of mirrors that converts sunlight into energy, the swarm orbits the star. The satellites capture the sunlight and send the energy via microwaves or lasers to receiving stations on planets or space stations. A system like this could be built step by step from smaller satellites. However, the Dyson Swarm requires a highly precise control system to prevent the individual satellites from colliding. A civilization capable of producing billions of satellites in space and keeping them in orderly orbits would have a highly advanced knowledge of construction. To keep such an installation in place, like a work of art, is something we humans can only dream of. Indications of such a sphere are irregular light fluctuations because only parts of the star's radiation are blocked when satellites pass by. Strong infrared emissions are further indications because unused energy is released into space as heat. 3. The Dyson Bubble is a floating mirror consisting of hundreds to thousands of ultralight, reflective solar panels. The panels float in stable positions due to the radiation and light pressure forces of the star. The mirrors direct the light to collection stations that distribute the energy. Such collection stations could be on planets, space stations, or on huge solar sails in space. Such civilizations could have long since forfeited the universe as a habitat and build entire cities in space. Since the mirrors are held in place by the radiation pressure of the star, no massive support structures are needed. Again, extremely precise control would be needed to keep the mirror stably in position. Only a civilization with highly developed nanotechnology would be able to do this. They would need to have extremely lightweight materials that allow perfect reflection. HEOS researchers look for temporary dimming of a star by the mirrors. The light, which is polarized in a certain way because it has been reflected, can be detected by us on Earth and assigned to a Dyson bubble. 4. The Dyson Ring is the entry-level version and consists of a massive ring that orbits a star similar to a halo and captures its energy. Solar cells on the inside of the ring collect the sun's rays. The energy could be transmitted wirelessly by microwaves or superconductors. Such a construction requires perfect stabilization to prevent the ring from drifting. The building materials could be extracted from asteroids or mined from moons by super-civilizations. This simplest form of a Dyson Sphere can be built by civilizations that are already fully utilizing their own planet and have reshaped their world to serve them or live in perfect symbiosis with the world. By comparison, we're at a level where we are still exploiting and destroying our planet. HEOS researchers scan the images from TESS, WISE, and Gaia for cyclic eclipses of a star that occur when the ring moves. 5. The Dyson Networks are intelligent combinations of Dyson Swarms, Dyson Bubbles, and Dyson Rings. 
Such power plants, consisting of satellite swarms, stationary mirrors, and collecting rings, resemble dynamic, multi-power plants that can revolve around a star like colorful merry-go-rounds. Dyson networks would be typical of the slow growth of a power generation facility that encloses a star. A culture operating a Dyson network may have started with a ring, then built additional small satellite networks, and thus expanded its power plant more and more. Such power plants could be chaotic and represent a civilization in an emerging phase. Despite their flaws, they would be even more flexible than a fixed Dyson shell, but also more complex in structure and control. In keeping with the gradual construction period, the operators of this power plant would collect the materials from their solar system bit by bit. Dyson networks are particularly easy for researchers to detect because their irregular structure also produces correspondingly atypical light patterns. When can we build a Dyson Sphere? The Parker Solar Probe is considered the fastest spacecraft ever built by humans. Despite this, it took about 3.5 years to get close to the Sun. It's considered an engineering marvel, and yet it's so small and vulnerable. It has to move away from the Sun's environment regularly, and it's difficult to control due to the Sun's gravity. This is where we are right now. As a species, we have not yet visited a planet outside our own world, and no one has been to the Moon in 45 years. So, you can imagine that it will take quite some time before we get to where even the most primitive builders of Dyson spheres are. We are technological Neanderthals and measured by the challenges that a material transport alone in the proximity of the star represents. We don't even stand at the beginning of a practical implementation. We have to master space travel, gravity, and material problems. Our science is like an abacus compared to the capabilities of the supra-civilizations that build Dyson spheres. On the Kardashev scale, it is type two civilizations that have sufficient resources and can extract sufficient material for construction. Supercomputers and nanomaterials that are difficult for us to imagine take over the construction controlled by artificial intelligence. Superconducting energy transmission is a distant utopia for us. We only know that it is theoretically possible. 